Okay, we're on a roll here. We've generated a, a unique customer code from within processing, um, when input processing. When they press escape, escape. If the company code is blank, uh, if the customer code that is, you know, the customer code is null or blank, it does a subroutine that goes out and gets it. And it does that by grabbing the first four letters of the company code and Push, pushing them against a unique number, and if the company, or the company code, or the company name, and if the company name is blank, it uses the class name instead. It's kind of a nice little process. There's only really one critical thing that we haven't done here, and we could do. We could take time to do it, and that is that if the company code's blank, we're using the first, the last name field. What if the last name field is blank too? Well, somewhere on our processing table, we should use one of the methods. Uh, that keeps a field from being blank like this, for instance. If the company code is blank and the last name field is blank, put them back on the screen and make sure they fill in at least one or the other. We're not going to do that right now, but I have to tell you that that's a critical thing to making this code work absolutely foolproof. If, it, if it's not foolproof, you're going to run into the error. Somebody's going to do what you... If you think it could happen, Believe me, it can happen. So anyway, this is nice, but here's what here's what this entails. We have to be we have to go into the file, we have to go to a record, we have to be on a record or adding a new record, and we have to press update, you know, and then press escape, escape, and yes, everything looks okay and so forth. We have to do a lot of things to make this happen. Uh, let's see where do I have? I have to put a field in here or something. Where it's well, I have to put a D here. Okay, and now I press escape, escape, and yes, everything looks okay, and I get my code. Well, that's a lot of trouble, even if we're adding a new record. Um, by the way, I should show you that adding a new record does work also. Um, it will create a company code, whether whether we're doing it one at a time or on new records, but it is one at a time. we got a lot of records here that don't have company codes, um, unique company codes for whatever reason. Let's Let's go take our code and put it into a processing only output format and run that process against the records that need it and it'll all be done in a, in a flash. How do we do that? Very simple. We go to define output and we say we need a, a new file. Uh, we have a bunch of them here already. We, we have a new, not file, but a new output format. And we'll, let's call it, how about make cust code. Okay, make cust code. What type of a format is it going to be? Does it have any printed output? No. It's going to be strictly a processing only format. So we'll come to the screen which asks we want to password it. No. Do we have to sort it as we're running it? No, not really. Nothing's going to print. Doesn't matter. We just run it against every record. And now here we are where we could say it's a processing only format. Nothing to design. Nothing to draw on the screen. Let's just press F8 and go right to processing for this form. The bottom right you see it's making a processing table now to attach to the output format called MakeCust. Well, this is great. Now how do we get that code that we wrote in here without having to type it all over again. Here's a nice function of the block functions, F8, and I'll say load, and I want to load to the current place right where I am, line one. What do I want to load? I want to load the table called input, the input processing table. So I load the whole input processing table in here, and now I'll just delete every line until I get to the part of the code. All right? Do I have to test whether the customer code equals null or not? Well, I could. That's not a bad idea. Let's leave that in here. So end, and then here's the actual code that's going to do the work. And then we don't need to ask this question about hard copy, or anything else for that matter. We'll delete the rest of the input table. Now we have a nice output table that will do our job entirely well. We really don't need this stuff here. Let's let's get rid of this and this. Let's call this another comment. You know, makes a customer code from the company slash last name and unique number. All right. So let us remember, remind us what this code does, and it's going to do it. Now it's going to do it to every single record that this processing table encounters. This is what's going to happen to it. It's going to go out and get the unique number and all the same stuff it does before. Let's save this table out. Now, if we want to run this, we could run it through output processing, but you know what? We could go put it on our menu too. 
Let's just run it through output processing. We'll do re 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 request output. Which one do we want to request? The M. Okay. And do we want to, want to run it against an index? No, we don't. Do we want to sort it as we run it? No, it's not important. Do we want to select all records? No, we don't. We want to select only a few records. The records we want to do, let's look at the field list. Field list is that the cus code is field 19. We want to do it to where all the cus codes are equal to blank or nothing. I'll press escape, escape. That's the process, that's the selection set. We're only going to get the ones that are blank and we're going to process them all and add a customer code to them. So I'll hit enter and we'll get a, some kind of an error. That's interesting and a good thing to see. We copied this code out of the processing table to the input processing table where it was a subroutine. So let's change that in our output table. On our output table we do not want to have a, there's no go sub. It just starts here, does this, 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 it's no return here. No reason to take something that used to be, so I mean I can't return anywhere. Instead, I want to just put an end statement here. This is all the simplest thing, and, I, and it's kind of a mistake you make all the time, so I wanted to show it to you. All right, let's run this again now. If I hit D, request output, and I run the process called make cust, and I don't want to run it against this, and I don't want to sort it. I don't want all the records. Here are the records I want. 19 equal to blank. Now it's going to blink through and that's how fast it did it. Let's go look in the file. If I look in B and I look at 4, uh, let's go to customer code. Let's see if there are any blank customer codes by hitting enter. Well, the first record I came to has a customer code, Acme 1000. Let's hit browse. There we go. Every single record now has a, a unique customer code. The, some of them are weird. Remember, I added a couple of them by hand. You see I added this one is is it's weird, but you know, there it is. It's, it's not made up of, it should be made up of MUSI because the company code is filled, but it's made up of WITH. It doesn't matter to me because it, it's still unique and I'm working with it. I want to show you how to run a custom, how to run a process against um, just some records in the file. And by picking only the records that didn't have a customer code, we accomplished that. This is now done. We're now working with a unique customer code. We can now add things in other files and attach them to that unique customer code. Let's say we want to generate invoices for that customer. On every single invoice we make for that customer, we'll attach the unique customer code. And that way, by looking at any invoice in an invoice file, we'll know exactly which customer it pertains to through the unique customer code. Very, very important.